Hello, and welcome back to Daddy Roll the One. I'm Martin, and today we're going to be talking about the different additions in the history of Dungeons & Dragons. And spoiler alert, even though we are currently on what's known as 5th edition or 5e, there are significantly more than just 5 additions to the game. And so this video is going to cover those and talk about some of the challenges with numbering the additions and, and where those differences come from. Before I jump in, though, I'd like to ask that if you enjoy this video, if you could please like it and subscribe to my channel and then share this video on your social media networks, because that is really the best and quickest way for me to grow my channel and my audience. And then lastly, go ahead and jump on into the comments. Let me know what you liked or didn't like about this video. Maybe share your experiences with these different editions or which one was your first or which one was your favorite or ask questions about ones that you've not heard of before. And let me know what you'd like to see me cover in future videos. So starting right out, this is the original game of Dungeons and Dragons that would have come out in 1974. Now, this is a later printing, even though it's the original edition. The original printing would have had a wood grain paper fake cover on it, that, so it looked like wood. Um, those are highly collectible now. There were only a thousand printed. Um, and they are very, very expensive. This is a later printing in this particular box, and this is known as the uh, in the community as the white box. Some folks will now refer to this as zero e. That's not super common. Um, and also, they'll, you'll hear people call this original D and D, or you know, abbreviated to O D and D. So all of those mean the same thing. This is the original game that came out in 1974. It was a three volume set, as you can see here, by Gygax, Gary Gygax, and Dave Arneson. And it was published by Tactical Studies Rules. Uh, that is the original publisher of D&D. &D. So Tactical Studies Rules, or TSR, was the original publisher. It was not Wizards of the Coast, which a lot of folks new to the game might not know that. So this box had three booklets in it. You can see how small these booklets were. This was Man and Magic, Monsters and Treasure, and Underwater and Wilderness Adventures. So this right here, these three books, that was the original game. There's some reference sheets in this box, but it, the, but it doesn't have anything that's not in these three books. So that was the game in 1974. But then a little change, 1975, Supplement 1, Greyhawk, is published. This particular one is by Gary Gygax and his home campaign, you can see here. Uh, Rob Kuntz also helped him uh, with this particular one, but this is really Gary's uh, home campaign of Greyhawk. So this is the first appearance of what you're going to see of the Thief class. It, thieves did not exist in these original three booklets. These original three only had clerics, fighters, and magic users. This is the first appearance of the Thief, first appearance of the Paladin subclass. So it was specifically made for fighters who were good and they could change and become paladins and the first appearance of the half elf as a race those didn't exist uh prior to this particular book then also later in 1975 you had supplement two this is blackmore by dave arneson this is the rules from his home campaign blackmore was actually a game that dave arneson was running late in the late 60s or very early 70s and this, that's the game that Gary Gygax saw and heard about that uh, convinced him to work with Dave Arneson to take those Blackmore rules and, and really codify them and create Dungeons and Dragons. Blackmore is going to be the first appearance of the Assassin class as well as the Monk class. Also, the first published adventure is in this book. It was called Temple of the Frog. Before this, there were no published adventures. You had to just make it up yourself. Then Supplement 3, 1976, this is Eldritch Wizardry by Gary Gygax and Brian Bloom. This particular book is the first appearance of the Druid as a player character class. Druids had appeared in one of the previous supplements, but they were only available as what was called a monster. And this now in this book, they're made to be player character classes. Also Psionics, if you've heard of that, Mind Powers, the first time that they appear is in this particular supplement. And then Supplement 4, also 1976, Gods, Demigods, and Heroes. So you can see there are four supplements which is actually more than the original three booklets that came in the game. And people will sometimes refer to original D&D &D starting with Supplement 1 and including these as the 0.5 edition. That's a modern thing. People didn't call it that back then because there were no editions. They didn't have numbers. 
Um, but now looking at it, there is a pretty significant change when you start including thieves and all these other classes. It, it and it, there were other rules in here, and it did change the game a, a little bit. But you see all these additional rules that are in here. There's more here than there was in the original game, and so Gary Gygax realized that there was going to be a need to revise the game. So that came along in 1977, and the first thing that happened was in July with the release of the basic D&D set. You'll see the box set here. Uh, I have a picture of that as well as, as the cover of the basic rule book that was included inside. This was edited by a man uh, named Holmes, Eric J. Holmes, and he was trying to take the rules that you saw before, all those seven booklets basically, and cull it down. He really only used the stuff from Greyhawk in this particular one, specifically the Thief class, and rewrite the rules to make it easier to understand for newer players. The rules for original Dungeon Dragons are very difficult to understand if you have no knowledge of the game already. So when you read it now, we make assumptions of what those rules meant, but back then they weren't aware. And it was really written assuming that you had a knowledge of playing war games, miniatures war games, or that you had actually played with either Gary or Dave in one of their home campaigns. And so you knew what all these terms meant that aren't really well defined in the game. As an example, just a quick example, alignment is mentioned in the rules. It never actually tells you what that means or what it is. It just says, here are lawful creatures, here's neutral creatures, and here's chaotic. But it never explains it. The Holmes book attempts to explain all that to make it easier for a new person to jump in. It only covers levels one through three. And at the end, it specifically says that if you want to continue, you should jump into what's called advanced D&D. So that means we need to talk about the next edition of the game that was released, advanced D&D. This came out in December of 1977. And you see here, it does have this advanced tag. It's only written by Gary Gygax. So let's talk about that. First off, as an artifact, this was the first hardback book that was published in the role-playing game industry. Before this, everyone was doing box sets because that's all that they had seen, uh, box sets with those soft cover books. This was a hardback book, not a box. And it's interesting that the Monster Manual was released first. So the rules from the game actually hadn't been finished uh, being written yet by Gary Gygax. But two things were going on here. The first one was that the rules for original D&D are a, a very flexible. It leaves a lot open to referee interpretation. And that's that was done on purpose because it was the assumption was players were going to come up with things and the referee needed to make a ruling, make a decision and say, this is how this is going to work in my game. And then consistently use that rule from that point onward. However, one of the things that was happening at the dawn of the hobby were these conventions where players were competing in tournaments where they were trying to gain points by going through adventures at conventions and trying to do, do it as quickly as they could with few character deaths and gaining the most treasure. And you would get points for all those things. And because they were playing that way, and because the rules weren't necessarily codified, different judges would award points very, very differently. And Gary wanted to avoid that. So he created Advanced Dungeons and Dragons as a way to codify pretty much everything that he could think of that would ever come up in a session so that there would not be any interpretation. It would be, oh, well, there's a rule for that and everyone would be scored the same way. The other thing that you'll notice here, again, I pointed out, this is only by Gary Gygax. You see Dave Arneson's name has disappeared from this. That is because by this point in TSR's history, 1977, Dave Arneson has left the company and he has been trying to get royalties for the game, which he was getting on the basic set. You saw that basic box set earlier, but only on the rule book. That box set had other components to it that he was not getting royalties from. Um, specifically uh, the, their modules that were included. So the, the original adventure that was in there um, was by Mike Carr. And so Mike Carr got the royalties from that, not, not Dave Arneson. And then later on, Gary Gygax wrote an adventure that he stuck in there so that he would get the royalties. Gary wanted all the royalties. So he claimed Advanced D&D was a different game. It was not a descendant of D&D, but it was a wholly, cre a wholly new creation from Gary Gygax. So the rules are actually quite different. So now you have this weird situation where you've got original D&D, &D, 
that has its own rules. Then you have the Holmes basic set that only cover, covers levels one through three and actually makes changes to the original D&D rules. Not a lot, but some. And then you have this book, the Monster Manual, for a game called Advanced D&D that doesn't even exist yet. So people ha were using this with either the Holmes edition of basic uh, called Holmes Basic Now or original D&D, even though the rules across all three of those were not necessarily compatible. Things like distances and how movement works and, and the alignment system across all three of those is very, very different. So now you have advanced D&D in 1977, and then 1978 sees the release of the Player's Handbook also by Gary Gygax, and then 1979 sees the release of the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Dungeons Master's Guide. Now, this is not the original cover. The original cover was different. However, this is a later printing with what is known as the Orange Spine version uh, by Jeff Easley, the art, and this is just the only edition of, of the DMG that I have for first edition. However, notice none of these say first edition because at the time nobody knew that that was going to be a thing. It just says Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. So that's 1979. Across 1980, new books for Advanced D&D are released, but then in 1981, uh, 1981, you have the release of this particular product. This is the uh, basic Dungeons & Dragons set, so it's a revision, but it's not really a revision of Holmes. It's a whole new creation. This one is edited by a man named Tom Moldvay, and this basic set had uh, a basic rule book and an adventure in it, but it again is redefining the game to make it easier for new players to come in. This particular game does not direct people to play um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons past third level. This also only goes levels one through three, but after that it, it, it directs people to look at the expert rule set. So this particular one, it does, here's the rule book for basic, but then it directs people again, not to advanced, but to the expert rules, which covers levels four through 14. And the rules for this are, are starting to become very different from the advanced D&D rules. Part of that again was done on purpose so that Gary could claim that advanced D&D was a different game. So if you ever hear people talk about race as class, that's this game. Uh, you don't play an elf fighter or an elf wizard, you play an elf, and it has different powers than if you play a dwarf or a halfling. So that's this particular version of the game. Now this game is called BX, Basic Expert. Uh, it goes up to level 14. Now it does have uh, in a note in here, it says if you want to continue past level 14 to refer to the companion rules. However, those were never published. So this only goes through level one through 14 and it again in the community is commonly known as either bx which is the most common other people will call it moldvay basic and they call it moldvay basic to distinguish it from the next basic set that came out in 1983 this one is edited by frank metz mensner uh, so this is called menser basic and you can see the box set here so this particular version of the game, again, 1983, came out with a basic set starting from scratch. It is very highly compatible with the previous Moldvay basic book, but makes some slight changes. And then in 1983, also, you have the expert set, this blue box here, covers levels 4 through 14, just like the previous edition. But then, a new thing, in 1984, you have the companion. So this is the companion box set for this version of D&D, edited by Frank Mensner, and this covers levels 15 through 25. Then you have this box set, the Master's Box, which covers levels 26 through 36. And then, in, and that was released in 1985. And then in 1986, we see the release of the Immortals Box Set. This covers people that have transcended beyond levels, and it almost become like gods. So basic expert companion masters and immortals this particular version is most commonly known as beck me so if you ever hear someone say i play beck me D, &D this is what they're talking about it's this particular edition jumping back though really quick to 1985 we see the release of this book now there had been many other books released for advanced D, &D. however this one made quite a few changes so this is the first 
official book for advanced Dungeons and Dragons that included new character classes. The Barbarian makes its debut in the official rules here. It had appeared in Dragon Magazine previously, but this is the first appearance of the Barbarian class in an official published book. This is also the book that's going to have the Thief Acrobat, which was a, a subclass, and the Cavalier, which was a subclass as well. The Thief Acrobat actually was called a, a split class. Uh, it has new rules for demi-humans, which are, you know, what you now call other races other than humans. Back then they were called demi-humans. Uh, this is the first appearance of cantrips in the game. And it just had a lot of other rules. It was a collection of, of stuff that was put out, but it really did start to change the game a little bit. And so a lot of people refer to this book and the books that came after this as the 1.5 edition of Advance. Again, that's a modern terminology. They, we did not use that at the time. We didn't know. We just saw the game was evolving, but nobody, was, nobody had edition numbering at that particular time. So this is 1985. Now we're going to jump forward to a few years later. Uh, when this book came out, Gary Gygax started to think about a second edition and was trying to figure out uh, how that was going to work. But then he was ousted from the company that he helped found. There's whole reasons why we're not going to go into them. But he left the company, and it wasn't until 1989 when this came out, second edition. So you see it's the same font, Advanced D&D, &D, but specifically says second edition. So this was written by a man named Dave Zeb Cook, who had been working in, in previous editions of D&D, both basic and advanced. Um, but this was uh, released in 1989, also saw the release of the uh, Monstrous Compendium, uh, what not called Monster Manual at that particular time. They changed it to Monstrous Compendium. It was a three ring binder and the Dungeon Master's Guide. So that's 1989. Then we're going to jump to 1991. And the reason I keep jumping back and forth here is because, as you can see, there were two editions of the game that were being sold and published and played concurrently. The advanced D&D game and then what is now known as, you know, collectively in, in sort of a bigger term as basic D&D, but at the time was just called D&D &D or Dungeons and Dragons, the, you know, non-advanced version. So the next change in that came in 1991. And it's the release of this now commonly called the Black Box. This was the easy to learn version of the game that was released in 1991. Another basic box set. Uh, this covered levels one through five. But also in, uh, in 1991, saw the release of a hardback book called the Rules Cyclopedia. This takes the first four sets of rules from the Beck Me edition. So basic expert companion and masters levels one through 36 puts it all into one book. So a lot of people uh, in the old school community, this is their desert Island version of D and D because it's all the rules you need in one rule book. It's got everything classes, monsters, and the DM advice all in one particular book. So then jumping forward from 1991, uh, you see in 1994, there was the release of the classic D and D game. This is another box set. This is just another way to make more money. There really weren't a lot of rules changes in here, but they uh, needed to come up with another uh, set to keep this game going. So this is the classic Dungeons & Dragons game. It was a box set. This is the ruled book that came with that particular game. Then in 1995, you have these books. These are the Player's Options books for 2nd Edition Dungeons & Dragons, 2nd second edi second Edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. So you've got skills and powers, combat and tactics, and spells and magic. These were a set of options, uh, as you can tell by the name, but they started to presage some of the changes that were going to come in the next edition of D&D, &D, which we're going to talk about in a second. But these particular books, a lot of folks nowadays, again, retroactively, will call this the 2.5 edition. So then the next edition that we were just talking about came in 2000. This is after Wizards of the Coast had acquired... TSR, and then after Wizards of the Coast had in turn been acquired by Hasbro. In 2000, they released a new edition of the game called Third Edition. I do have the Third Edition books, however, mine are out in the garage, so this is just a stock photo. This is the Player's Handbook. And you see here, it says Third Edition, but it doesn't say Third Edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, it just says Dungeons and Dragons. So now we start to get into some of these weird naming conventions, because at this point, WotC made the decision to stop having two concurrent editions of D&D &D and to go to just one edition. And so doing so, 
uh, now, now you see why they start doing three E four E five E, even though there were several editions that came before that. So in 2003, the game was revised again, and I only include this one because they published rule books and they officially called it on the book 3.5. So this is technically a separate edition, even though it's built on third edition, it does make a few changes that are pretty significant. So that's the 3.5 edition. Then in 2008, you have the release of fourth edition. So fourth edition makes some significant changes to the game. There was no open game license, which is something that came with third edition. So this edition of the game is actually directly responsible for the creation of the Pathfinder role-playing game, if you've heard of that. It was made as a competitor to this game and actually outsold this for a while. So this is 2008. Didn't sell well. This edition of the game did not sell well. So by 2010, they released a revision called the fourth edition essentials line. However, you will see here, they don't actually mention the word essentials on the cover. So that came out in 2010. Again, this edition didn't sell well. So you have fifth edition then that hits the ground in 2014. This is the current edition that we're on. However, in 2020, we see the release of Tasha's cauldron of everything a lot of people will refer to this as the 5.5 edition because of all the new rules and changes that it makes so that's our walk through the history of the different editions of dungeons and dragons i hope that you enjoyed this please do ask questions and lastly i'd like to ask that if you do want to support the channel the best way you could do that right now is by going to my shop there's a link uh, in the comments and uh, buy a little something to help support the channel thank you and i'll see you next time